Welcome on in everyone. Welcome to this special video that I have for the new moon in Cancer. And as many of you know, I usually go live and I do, you know, only the requested signs. But due to scheduling conflicts, I've decided to film this quickie <laughs> reading instead. Um, let's clear the space and hopefully we'll get some clear messages, okay? So as many of you know, new moons are a time of new beginnings. And it's a good time to get started on some things, launch some projects, take some new initiatives. I am definitely doing that myself, <laughs> which is why I'm not gonna be able to go live, right? But um, you know, look at where this is hitting your natal chart, and that will give you more specifics on exactly how you're being impacted during this new moon. And with it being cancer, uh, could have to do with home, family, sense of belonging, feminine energy, which we have a lot of this month. If you want to know more about this month's astrology, by the way, particularly concerning home, family, those type of relationships, relationship with yourself emotionally, then uh, make sure to watch my July astrology report. I will have it linked at the end of this video if you want to see it. But what we're going to do is we're going to start out with Aries and we're going to go all the way from Aries to Pisces. And I'm just going to pull some oracle cards and see what divine downloads I can get for you guys having to do with new beginnings. Oh, and make sure to watch your rising sign as well. Let's get into it. Starting with Aries. Spirit, what messages do you have for Aries and their new beginning with this new moon in Cancer? What advice do you have for Aries? What advice do you have for Aries? There we go. Soulmates and at the foundation. Well, that was in reverse, but it has a lot to do with you really tapping into your higher power. By the way, this is impacting your fourth house, Aries. Okay, so... Um, there's a lot here to do with home, family, sense of belonging, and sometimes soulmates are, you know, family members. They're those most close to us, those near and dear to us, and they're also people who are brought into our lives that impart lessons to us, and we impart lessons to them as well. With this in reverse, that's a number four. You got two fours here with a 41 and a four. Hmm. Might have been some conflict over somebody not accessing their higher power, their intuition. So there could be some kind of lesson about that. And yeah, I can see possibly with this new moon squaring Jupiter in your first house of self, there probably has been some kind of conflict uh, butting heads with somebody. Yet there is some possibility here that these lessons are helping you to strengthen your own sense of identity, your own inner security and your own inner calm but i think you gotta put that in the upright right in order for that to happen all right let's move on to taurus it's been a while since i've done taurus right i haven't been getting a lot of requests for this sign i hope y'all are doing well taurus i've been missing doing this reading because i'm a taurus rising and since i generally only read for this the requested signs and i haven't had someone request taurus in quite a while um, I've been missing out on that. <laughs> Bummer, but yeah, you know, it kind of lightens my load. So let's see what you have, Taurus. What are the messages here about a new beginning? And we have poised, also in the reverse. No place like home, also in the reverse. Let's see if that has any meaning, but let me put them in the upright so you can clearly see them. Does somebody feel like they don't have a sense of belonging and that things are not set up the way that they want? I could totally, totally resonate with that as a Taurus rising. You know, this new moon is occurring in your third house, as it is for mine, as a Taurus rising, you know. And I think the challenge here is that it's squaring Jupiter in our 12th house at the same time. 12th house having a lot to do with the spiritual realm, what's hidden what is maybe having to do with healing, perhaps with issues having to do with hidden enemies or self-sabotage. Perhaps you put yourself in this position because, you know, 12th house is about martyrdom. Uh, it is about having to hold back for a time. Maybe you felt this was something that had to be done, yet and I'm hearing the word displaced. 
Now you've become displaced over this sacrifice. I'm, I'm getting the hangman card, okay? Um, and now I'm hearing limbo with this card. So with this new moon, I think that energetically, this is going to put you more in tune with your intuition and might even give you um, more of a curious nature in terms of really delving into the unknown. Because whatever challenges you're facing in terms of housing, home, family, and not being positioned optimally or needing to get positioned more optimally, that is causing you to really look into things that maybe you previously hadn't or in some respect were not were veiled to you. And this is also a time where perhaps you are looking at how you can improve communications, with that being third house, um, communicating dreams, 12th house, right? And it might have to do with people in your local community where you reside. It might also have to do with siblings, family, you know, these will be the family members that might be relevant during this transit. All right, so let's move on to Gemini. Gemini, I hope y'all are doing well. And um, yeah, it's been a while since I've done a Gemini reading as well as Taurus, because uh, for some reason I don't have a lot of Gemini followers. Not sure why. Not sure why, because I'm a fellow air sign. And y'all are definitely smart people. You are, um, <laughs> you are good communicators. But uh, let's see what we have here. Treasure Island and New Life in Reverse. Loyal Heart in Reverse as well. So just intuitively what I'm getting out of this is that something hasn't quite broken forth yet for you. And it's something that you really uh, value. Okay, it holds a lot of value in your life. Um, but something has not, I'm hearing gestation, gestation, okay? And it might have to, there might be an issue with disloyalty, okay? I'm just getting this intuitively, but as I look at the astrology, I'm seeing that this new moon is falling into your second house having to do with values, self-worth, possessions, income, okay? And, th and I think that's where this Treasure Island card is really factoring in, is something that you very much value. And I'm also getting a vibe of self-sufficiency as well with that nine that it has to do with your ability to stand on your own, on your own accord. But this new moon is squaring Jupiter in your 11th house, having to do with networking. So perhaps there is an issue with a lack of support or difficulty getting support from others with your plans. And it could be professional connections. It could be platonic connections. But I think that for some of you, you've had some ideals. You've had some... These are ideals that are very important to you, okay? So over the next two weeks would be a time where you could use this energy to tap into perhaps launching some new beginning having to do with your personal resources. Some kind of venture that will help you make more money and perhaps you could really get it moved forward if you can get some people on board to play a supportive role. But again, I see the challenge here is getting getting that help and support from friends. If you're able to get it, my gosh, go get it, okay? Let's move on to Cancer. Well, Cancer, I hope it was a good birthday season for y'all. Hope you had a really happy birthday. And um, we will soon be heading into Leo season. Mm -hmm. So enjoy it while you can. Let's see with this new moon in your sign. I really think this could be an emotional one. Oh my gosh, how is this going to impact Cancer hitting right in your first house, having to do with your sense of self, your first impressions, how you're coming across to people, and I'm feeling that one there. In reverse, truth be told, go the distance in reverse, okay? Well, you know, there's some issue with um, being honest, okay? And I find with cancers, um, I think from their perspective, uh, it, when they struggle with this, it's it's the sensitivities of dealing with uncomfortable subjects. And so sometimes they can sidestep the truth. And, you know, that might not even be your energy. It could be somebody around you. But I see that because there is a lack of clarity, truth, authenticity, transparency, 
something has not been able to get as far as it could have gone. Um, this is going to be an opportunity, by the way, for you to really own your feelings with this full moon. This is, you know, once a year chance that you have to do this and really set some powerful intentions on this new moon. But do bear in mind that this new moon is squaring your 10th house, Jupiter in your 10th house, having to do with your status, your career, and goals, you know, your ambitions. So there could be an issue of you trying to get your your professional aspirations to become a reality. But what I'm seeing here is that there's some kind of challenge because somebody's not giving or getting the full truth. I really feel intuitively what's key is that somebody's going to have to just own the truth as difficult as it is in order to put that go the distance card in the upright and really get things where you want them to go. Authenticity, transparency is going to be required. All right, let's move on to Leo. And uh, Leo, we are headed into your birthday season. I hope you are having a good one. And let's see what the cards have to say for you in terms of advice with this new moon in Cancer, getting a new beginning. This is a time when your 12th house is going to get activated. And so similar to your opposite sign, Aquarius, this matter of spirituality is coming up for you. It's really important and it is squaring your ninth house, having to do with higher learning, long distance travel, beliefs. I mean, ninth and 12th house squaring off. Wow. There's something going on, maybe some challenge or difficulty in terms of what you believe versus what's actually going on on a spiritual level or being, you know, taking a task in some respect, some difficulty with um, dreams or aspirations that you have maybe involving long distance travel or looking at the bigger picture of what you want to achieve. Um, but, you know, this is a lot of kind of, um, I don't want to call it airy, fairy, hooey, dewy energy, but <laughs> yeah, there will be a need to get very clear on your visions for the future and try to bring them down to earth. Okay, let's see. And that's already jumping right out the gate. Soul maze. Well, Aries got that. Okay, so perhaps there's something and the never ending story is in reverse. Well, actually, I'm, act I'm reading this in the positive. I do feel this is good. Okay, some of you. Um, similar to Aries, you know, right now you're dealing with um, people in your life who are there for a reason. They brought lessons, spiritual lessons into your life. You have done the same for them. If you kept going round and round with this person, I think you're ready to put it behind you. Um, at least that's what I'm getting with that 37. 37 is a 10. And 10 is endings. And 10 breaks down to 1. 1 is new beginnings. I'm honestly getting that you are trying to break out of this box you're trying to break out of this cycle of whatever the lesson has been and some of you it's been going on for a very very long time some of it i'm hearing karmic um it's, huh. some of it you didn't understand but it was all this is very spiritual like it was all faded energy i'm getting a lot of faded energy here but again also when we're talking about ninth and twelfth houses super faded energy in the hidden realm that you can't really see or understand why i'm hearing they were testing your beliefs testing your beliefs testing your faith what are you going to believe in now what are you going to have the faith for now this is something that i really sense is key with this new cycle that we're getting into or that you're getting into rather <laughs> all right let's move on to virgo and Virgo, this is impacting your 11th house, having to do with friends, colleagues, ideals, and your 8th house is being activated as well, having a lot to do with intimacy, shared resources. For some of you, it might even go deeper into I mean, really even more private stuff like sex, debts, you know, taxes, the government. Um, so this could be a time when collaborating with others 
is very much highlighted maybe launching something new that involves other people um, I can see with both the 8th and the 11th houses, uh, others, others is very relevant, okay? Why? Time for a nap. Serendipity. I am getting intuitively that some of you have been saying, why God, why, when God, when? Um, you know, maybe you took a time out on, on life or relationships or circumstances. I feel like time's up. It's time to collaborate with people now, ready or not, is what I'm hearing. And I feel like you're going to know that this is what you need to do because some serendipitous events are going to just occur. Synchronicities, signs, nudges from spirit telling you, hey, it's time to, you know, come out from this. It's time to accept that some questions cannot be answered. Some things cannot be understood. And, you know, get out there and plug back in and move on with it. Get on with it. And both, with both of these cards, I'm also getting, I'm picking up from the yellow, a lot of solar plexus energy where, again, if you weren't asserting yourself, you weren't putting yourself out there because you felt like you had a lot of unanswered questions and you were tired and exhausted of it with it, you know, it's time to... I just heard expiration date, okay? It's time to get on with your life. Um, get on to a new chapter. And this has to do with collaborating with others. And like I said, you'll know that this is for you because you're going to have a lot of signs and synchronicities come up. I'm also getting with this 1819. I'm getting uh, things about self-sufficiency, but a realization that... And I'm, I'm, I'm getting three, three of pentacles I'm seeing, okay? That in order for you to have your cup runneth over, have more than enough, uh, there's going to have to be collaborations with people. There's going to have to be a coming out of your, right, hermit, hermit phase. If you were, I know, like, I, what did I just say? I just told, like, <laughs> I told the hermit not to be a hermit. My bad. Please forgive me. <laughs> All right. Y'all make, make what you will with that. Let's move on to Libra. Libra. All right, so I hope y'all are doing okay. I haven't done a reading for y'all in quite some time. Um, so hopefully we get some good messages here. And if you want to see more Libra readings, make sure to like, share, subscribe. Uh, definitely subscribe and activate that bell for notifications because, you know, when I go live again for y'all, I will put a message out um, asking which signs you want me to read for. And if you say Libra, I'll read for Libra. But if you don't say Libra, I won't read for Libra, right? That's how we do it, typically. Okay, so Libra, this uh, new moon is impacting your 10th house, having to do with your career, your status, your ambitions, the way people see you out in public, you getting recognition with your accomplishments. But it is squaring Jupiter in your 7th house, having to do with partnerships. So overall, I, what I'm seeing getting triggered for you is a lot having to do with agreements, agreements with others. And you possibly during this time coming into a realization that you need to partner with people who are on the same page as you. People who are in alignment with what you consider successful in life. And that might really prove to be critical in terms of you hitting your you know, career goals and aspirations. Like you have got to align people, align yourself with the people who can get you there. Okay. And also you might have a lot of people in your life that could be supportive, but you've got to really, you've got to prioritize. Um, you got to prioritize the people that are going to be most important in the here and now, like in the next weeks forward. Now you had all these in reverse. So some of you have, uh, you know, you've been lacking some imagination. Okay. Um, and again, I'm getting with the two here, the 20 breaking down to a two, something with whoever you've been partnering with, there has been a lack of creative inspiration have you aligned yourself with people who are not coming up with solutions viable solutions is what i'm hearing the all that glitters card is telling me that maybe you know that you aligned yourself with these people because they came in with nice packaging it looked really good on the outside but it didn't quite measure up and i'm getting a one six seven you know that again this is very seventh house have you partnered with people who had pretty packaging but you open it up and there's something else going on on the inside 
or it's just, again, it's pretty packaging, but there's no substance to it. There's no ability to really brainstorm and come up with viable solutions to problems. Therefore, with the mending card, another seven here in reverse, um, there's difficulty really repairing things or rebuilding things that are not working out for you. Why? Because it, honestly, I'm getting all over this, that some of you have not been very mindful in terms of who you're partnering with. You're, you're like drawn into somebody who, and in all fairness, maybe they misled you. Okay. But you've got to look beyond the surface of these relationships and into the substance in terms of what can they deliver you, whether we're talking professionally or, you know, business partnerships or marriage partnerships really hone in over the next couple of weeks at who's going to be able to get you there, who is actually bringing um, viable opportunities in that actually have substance. All right, we are going to move on to Scorpio. Hope you all are doing well, Scorpios. I know it's, uh, I'm going to take care of the Scorpios. I'm going to send the love out to the Scorpios. It's been rough, right? South Node in Scorpio. Eclipses in Scorpio. Sweet Jesus. Much love to the Scorpios, right? I'm feeling this one for y'all. Regeneration in reverse. Exchanging gifts in reverse. Um, I don't know why, you know, the, not all these cards are in reverse, okay? But but many of them are, and it's just the way I picked it up, but I'm just going to go with it, okay? Because I'm getting additional messages off the reverse. And sometimes, like, don't read too much into that. Sometimes it's better that cards are in reverse. But I'm feeling like some of you are not quite able to regenerate something. Like it's on the table, but when it came out in reverse, um, and I'm getting with a four, six, a 10 endings, which breaks down to a one new beginnings. It's not quite there. Okay. It's something has broken down and some of you are having difficulty getting the new started. Okay. And I think part of the problem is that, and that's a nine with a two, seven, again, about endings, endings, a nine, 10, you're, you're you're finalizing stuff and so with this new moon in cancer you're having to look at the exchange of what is or isn't right because that came in reverse and it's almost i'm getting a vibe off of it like you're not getting the exchange that you want you're not getting a fair exchange you're having to look at what kind of exchange am i, I am i wanting in my life in order to get this new beginning started for you, you know, this new moon is in your ninth house having to do with your beliefs. It might have to do with long distance travel, might have to do with higher learning. You putting your faith in something. And what's also getting activated during this time is your sixth house having to do with a mundane everyday life. For some of you, your health. Okay, this is for some of you, this is very much about your physical health. And it can also be emotional health uh, for some of you as well. But it might involve you taking a leap of faith, ninth house, in order to improve what's going on in your day-to-day -day life or improve your health on the day-to-day. -day. But again, before you're able to really get this restoration, you're going to have to set some intentions about what the exchange needs to be in order to get the change that you want, the new beginning, the growth, the healing that you want. Because I am feeling intuitively there is some issue with, you know, we're talking ninth house versus sixth house. There's some kind of issue here with maybe what you want to believe is necessary is not grounded or down to earth. And that might be what's stumping you getting this new beginning is because you're having to get real. I just heard basic. Okay. Uh, I just heard basic and, and, and again, it might not be what you wanted or you put your faith in or that you, you know, that you want to believe. I just heard nuts and bolts, like what is required to get this new beginning, this regeneration, because I feel like there's something off maybe in your beliefs in terms of, being brought back to that south node there's something you have to release with your beliefs in order to get this new beginning because there's something not not grounded with your with the exchange and i'm not saying that you're wrong 
there's a lot of unfairness going on in the world, but this is getting to a place of like, well, this is what it is. And based on what it is, this is what's required in order for me to get what I want, fair or not, like it or not. And once you finally accept what is required to regenerate, once you, you know, accept and honor that truth, which could be very difficult with your beliefs, okay, um, you are going to be able to put this in the reverse. And I think there will be a fair balanced exchange. I hope that helps y'all. Let's move on to Sagittarius. What are the messages? I'm going to flip this. Yep, flip it. Sagittarius, please tell me. What does Sagittarius need to know with this new moon in Cancer? That is lighting up their eighth house, having to do with really personal private stuff. Intimacy, sex, death, taxes, other people's resources. All these emotional bonds, you know? And fifth house has, you know, is also going to be activated with this new moon. And that has also a lot to do with sex and romance, you know, more, you know, lighthearted um, energy. But it's interesting because both the fifth and the eighth house activated here will highlight sexual relations, okay? And for those of you who are like, oh, well, that ain't me. All right, then maybe this is instead having to do with children, having fun, dating, getting out there with the fifth house, creative projects, creative ventures with the fifth house, whatever you're creating. And then that eighth house having to do with shared resources. A lot of sharing going on one way or another, okay? Let's see what the cards have to say with Sagittarius. And I'm feeling this here. Thinker observer whoa this is some very very cerebral energy i feel like you are reflecting on what is going on um you might be pulling back very quiet during this time i'm gonna pull additional cards for you because i'm kind of getting them there's an eight um four a lot of fours, a lot of fours. You're trying to maintain some, maintain some stability in your life, Sagittarius, I feel. Um, and you, I just heard something about, I don't want to rock the boat, not rocking the boat. Um, other people might feel like you're being quiet um, or that you're not plugged in or that you're oblivious or something. But I feel like it's a pulling back to observe what's going on and to really reflect on it. A very reflective energy for you. Any further messages for Sagittarius? Because honestly, even like intuitively as I'm sitting with this for you, I'm getting something blank. Even the colors here are just kind of dull in a way. They're, they don't really leap off. You know what I'm saying? Um, they're kind of muted. And, and, and I just feel that intuitively with you. Like what is, come on. You cannot tell me that the fire sign has a lackluster life. Absolutely not. What's going on? Um, you maybe need to speak up, okay? Because I'm getting with the cards and with the energy that I'm feeling, there's some reluctance to speak up. And fifth house is definitely, you know, where Jupiter, Jupiter's going to be in that fifth house, really putting a magnifying glass on what are you creating in this life? What's going on with your children? What's going on with your love life? Getting out there, having fun, dating. What are you doing? And are you speaking up about your needs? And again, going back to, you know, the possible sexual tone of these houses, fifth and eighth, right? It could be about you speaking up finally about your needs. So that, you know, whoever you are connecting with on a sexual level, you're getting your needs met. Because this is a very kind of, any further messages for Sagittarius? So in that one, lion spirit, be generous of spirit, be spirit, sweet results await. Well, you know, some of you things might, you might have got stung, all right, in a relationship and a partnership is what I'm getting off of this. Um, I just heard the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. And I'm also seeing something about uh, Leo season, okay, which we are going to be coming into in July, mid-July. So I just heard, wait for it. Um, this could be you waiting for it, observing, thinking all the way up into, you know, maybe the last week of July. And then, boom, things start to sweeten up for you. Um, and things start to open up for you as well with these cards. 
that is all I'm getting for Sagittarius. And um, let's get on to the next sign, which is Capricorn. Capricorns, I hope you are doing well. And uh hope you're not getting too triggered uh, with all this Cancerian energy, which is opposite of you, right? You're the father of the Zodiac. Cancer is the mother of the Zodiac. All right, so... And there's a lot of that energy coming into uh, this month of July. Make sure y'all check out my monthly astrology report for July. Um, if you missed it, I'm going to have it at the end of this video. But yeah, make sure you check that out because it talks more about this Capricorn Cancer energy going on. And I'm telling you, this new moon, it's impacting you. It is hitting your seventh house, right? Which is opposite of first where that, you know, Cancer is getting triggered. And that's relevant there because we're talking about this axis of self versus other getting lit up with this new moon. And let's see. Oh, that's lovely. I just heard blessed will be a blessing, but somebody is not for you. Okay. Something is not for you. And I, I just heard it's a blessing in disguise. Okay. It's a blessing in disguise. And, you know, with this hitting your seventh house of long-term committed partnerships, and it's also triggering your fourth house, having to do with home, family, sense of belonging. In some way, a uh, housing issue is getting triggered with this transit. And this, this dichotomy of your inner life versus your outer life. You know, what's going on in your private domestic sphere versus your public professional sphere. So this new moon is possibly triggering, uh, and I'm seeing a lot of purple with these cards, so very spiritual, okay? Very spiritual is what I'm getting off these cards, is that uh, perhaps spirit is trying through these energies to get you to look at how you can make changes in your life to get the reciprocation that you want and that you deserve that also support your need for security which is huge when we're talking about capricorn and ca uh, cancer your opposite sign and we got a new moon in cancer right security issues are big um, but perhaps somebody around you on the day-to-day -day is not really helping with your security issues or needs let me see if i can get even more because again i don't know why when i got into the um, transpersonal signs which are the last four I'm getting something, you know, super like some kind of vague, 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 vague energy. I'm not getting as uh, descriptive as I think the other ones. Anything more for Capricorn? Anything more for Capricorn? Oof, messy. Owl spirit, you see clearly now. Anything else? I just heard eagle eye view. Eagle eye view. You know. Dear spirit, bring a gentle touch. Sandpiper spirit, be playful. I don't know. I just heard lighten up, okay? Both of these are sixes, all right? Something about somebody that you're dealing with on the day-to-day -day maybe is not for you, okay? But I think you've got the higher perspective and wisdom to know what is and isn't for you. And I think that you're going to be diplomatic about it. I think that you're going to do things um, respectfully. Maybe to bring something to an end or a close. But this is somebody that you are dealing with on the day-to-day -day that is just not for you. Because maybe they're they're just playing around with your security and, and you can't do that with Capricorn. You cannot do that. So perhaps cutting some people out. Again, maybe in your uh, home life. Maybe who you've been partnered with. Not having them there um, is actually a blessing. I, I know it's just a weird message. It's a weird message. But that's what I'm getting. I hope it helped. I hope it resonated with somebody. Let's move on to the lovely Aquarians, who, as you know, I am ever so fond of. Aquarians, I hope y'all are doing well. Got a lot of Aquarian viewers. And uh, wow, 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 wow. It's wild. The energy has been wild, has it not? Gosh, it's been so wild. This is hitting our sixth house, okay? But again, that information is probably most relevant to um, Aquarius risings, right? Because, I mean, I'm an Aquarius sun, Mercury, and midheaven, and technically it's in my third house. So I go watch my rising sign, all right? 
So most relevant to Aquarius Risings, this is impacting your sixth house, having to do with the day-to-day, -day, mundane life, work habits, health routines, stuff like that. I'm getting this come to the edge. Truth be told, well, Cancer got that same card also in reverse. Somebody is not telling the truth or it's not being understood or seen. Uh, perhaps it's being veiled. There's, it might not be that anybody's outright trying to deceive, but there seems to be a lack of clarity here. And I'm getting a lot of blues with these cards, which is telling me that there is some issue with somebody's thinking, with somebody's communicating, and they need to go a little bit deeper, okay, is what I'm getting. I feel also with this card that perhaps the reason why the truth was not fully disclosed is because of something with conflict. Either somebody knew it was going to be a conflict or they were afraid of a conflict, something to that effect. And I do see that this energy is um, squaring Jupiter in your third house, which is a lot about communications here. And squares are challenges, they're difficulty. So again, it's it's really, the astrology is affirming what I'm getting intuitively, like the reason why is if someone's holding back all the information because they're afraid it's going to start some fight or conflict or that there's just, they know that there's no agreement. So why am I even going to bother speaking up about that? Or they're, they're just not telling everything because they know that they're not going to get agreement if they give all the details. It's it's kind of, uh, but I'm really getting with the advice here that somebody needs to step out, go out on a limb. And, um, and it might simply be, you know, I've got to commit myself to a different way of thinking, of communicating on the day-to-day. -day. And I say on the day-to-day -day because of this in your sixth house. Because this might be, you know, mentally and ultimately physically not healthy for you to hold this back or to not see something, right? Because there's this mind, body, spirit connection. Let me see. Let me see if we can get any additional messages here. Some of you are trying to bring something to an end to culmination and it might have to do with where you live, where you reside locally. People that you um, interact with on a day to day, because I'm getting out of these uh, two houses. These are people in you know, sixth and third house have to do with, you know, the people that you're you're running into on a day to day. Eagle spirit, spirit has your back. Dog spirit, be loyal to what you love. So this might have to do with, again, a companion or somebody who's very familiar with you on a day to day. But um, I'm seeing here a five and ten. OK, right, because a 23 breaks down to a five. Nineteen breaks down to uh, no, my bad. It, yeah, no, it does break down to a, a 10. Okay. Um, so I'm seeing that there's, again, with these two cards come to the edge, you need to bring something to closure in your life. Yet with these two fives here, I'm seeing there's some type of conflict, but spirit is, and I'm again, seeing something about eagle eye view, but there's a conflict. Look at this, these birds, birds are a lot about air. It's about communication thinking. Okay. But, and these birds are representing a lot of wisdom. And a lot of um, courage, okay? Having the courage to end something or to speak about something very clearly and concisely and just lay your, lay your cards out on the table and say, you know what? I'm going to do what I'm loyal to or what's loyal to me. I'm going to do what I love. And I'm going to take a leap of faith. I'm going to spread my wings and, you know, trust that spirit is going to give me the wind to carry on. To give me the support I need to close something out in my life that is reaching the end, the culmination. And I know this is a new moon we're talking about. It looks like you're trying to start something that ends something. Okay. Yet there's conflict about it. Maybe people don't agree with you, or maybe you don't really see quite yet how you're going to make this all come together. I'm also seeing a struggle here about doing this. But that is what I'm getting for you, Aquarius. And uh, let's close out with Pisces. All right, lovely, lovely Pisces. I hope y'all are doing well. And let's see. Let's see what messages we have in this new moon in Cancer. For Pisces, probably going to be very, very emotional. Oh my gosh. So this is lunar energy in a water sign, impacting a water sign. My gosh, buckle up. Put your life preserver on, right? I'm not trying to scare anybody, though. <laughs> I'm not... This is going to be impacting your fifth house, having to do with children, creative ventures, fun, dating, romance, and maybe the way you're expressing yourself in some capacity or another. But it will be squaring Jupiter. 
in your second house having to do with self-worth, uh, resources, personal resources, maybe your income, your values. And so this could be a time where you find yourself reflecting on what you need, what you value, and expressing that. And this might be a time when not only do you do that, but you actually start um, empowering yourself by putting those feelings, words, and actions into alignment. Look at this. You got a lot. You got a lot of cards. Oh, we saved the best for last, huh, Pisces? Let me move it up here. Okay. Uh, Co-create between worlds, unfinished symphony, fork in the road, and at the bottom, deep knowing. Well, I mean, if Pisces doesn't know, nobody knows, right? <laughs> yeah, y'all are out in the ethers. So um, let me say, if I can get this all on camera. Looks like there, you know, cooperation with others is going to be required. And yeah, that might involve your children. It might be dating prospects, okay? And in some way, your personal resources and values are being triggered. I think that some of you are trying to create a new life, a new world for yourself, but you're kind of in limbo, okay, with this in between worlds card. You're, you're in limbo. And again, maybe what you need is a good partner to help you stabilize things, get some expansion. I feel like what you're moving towards is about, it, it has to do with, Something you started maybe a while back that was interrupted. Um, you got derailed. Possibly you hit a fork in the road. You were not able to finish that thing on a high note, on a beautiful note. And so you're trying to get back and end things the way that you wanted and intended before, you know, you hit this fork in the road. Some of you, there's, there's, this is not going to be a straightforward process. There's this kind of transition that you're going through and being brought back to like childbirth where, right, transition is the final stages of labor, right, before you push that baby out and you birth that new beginning, okay? So I see you going through this transitory time of I'm trying to get from A to B and it's not it's, uh, it's, it's not the easiest. I need other people to support me in making this transition, okay? And I'm also seeing that in terms of you going back and finishing this thing on a really high note or a beautiful note, um, it's your choice. With a fork in the road card, I'm getting that, you know, you could just stay where you're at or not. It's up to you. Um, but I think that some of you are going to choose to end something and get a new beginning. Okay, definitely with both of these cards. And I think that I'm getting two fours here as well. It is probably a matter of stability as well. What is sustainable over the long term might be of interest to you. And again, I'm getting something about partnership, partnership from beginning to end. I feel like if you are at a crossroads in terms of making a decision, which way should I go this way or that, you need to go where you are getting the support, the cooperation to create the new beginning that deep down you know you need that resonates with you at a soul level. I'm also getting from this card with the, the lunar energy here. It's very specific to this new moon. You're going to get some intuitive downloads, some empathic downloads. You're going to have wisdom with these of knowing how you need to rightly apply the truth of the matter to your life. Again, it's this wisdom that's going to help you discern which way do I go and who is going to help me co-create in that direction. Well, that's all I have for y'all, and I hope this has blessed y'all. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Make sure you check out my other videos if you are interested. Y'all have a wonderful new moon in Cancer. Be blessed.